Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you this morning. Listen to some of these headlines. Somebody's moving lots of Bitcoin on Coinbase, and I mean a lot. SEC update information on the deposition. It is no longer on Monday. We're going to give you all of that information. And guess what? It just so happens on the same day that the SEC rules for William Hinman to sit for a deposition. A co-founder to Ethereum appears to have hauled ass. We're going to get into that. And here comes regulation. Don't believe it. It's still true. Janet Yellen and the president's working group. And technical analysis for XRP. Three different price predictions going forward I think you need to know about. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here. You can also follow us on Digital Perspectives News no spaces on Facebook. Give us a like and follow there. We will be doing a live stream this Sunday. They are exclusive to Facebook Live, so make sure you give us a like and follow there as well. $1.277 trillion for the cryptocurrency market cap this morning. It's a lot of money missing. That's just that simple. And you know what? So let's focus on what we do well here, I believe, is the fundamental news. Let's focus on what is happening that will ultimately change the landscape. And I'm not just talking about price but how does price change this market is speculative it is not utility driven and that's a moment that i am waiting for and i think we're getting closer to that because we need regulation clearly in place around the world in order for that moment to truly happen so let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here these numbers are brought to you by i trust capital How does Aave impact the banking industry? We can visit their website to find out more information. And by the way, Curve Finance is now available in your crypto IRA retirement account, a backbone of DeFi. Curve is the premier place to make huge swaps with nearly zero slippage. How about that one? Yeah. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, IRA. I told you the link in the description and comment box. It is the best IRA on the planet. There's no doubt about it. Go check it out. 58 cents is where we're at this morning. The low range of the XRP price is 57.56 and the upper range is 6091. So we're sitting at 58 right now. We'll keep an eye on it. And we're going to take a look at these price predictions. There's three different ones and they're very different. I think you're going to want to see each one of them. This is really cool stuff happening right here. Casino Coin announces 30 day staking is open for BitTrue Official. Go, go, go. How about that one? Man, I'm thinking about that one if it isn't already too late to get into it here. But BitTrue makes the announcement that they are giving 6% interest APR in their 30-day lockup program. How about that one? Yeah, I think I need to be looking at that. Look at here. SEC changes their new handle alert and or changes their handle and it's a new handle alert here. SEC GOV is what they are now. And This could be because they've been catching so much shade. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is because of the XRP community just lighting their ass up over the horrible case that's been put together here. Although it is the path I do believe we need to go down, right? So once we go down, we're already down this path. Let's not go back the other way, right? Let's go ahead and finish what got started. And here we go right here. Some more news. According to a recent tweet by the Crypto Track Whale Alerts team, over the past three hours, an anonymous crypto whale has moved a staggering 13,003 Bitcoins to Coinbase. Okay, you caught me. You know. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know who that was, but I tell you, this. I've said this many times before. Look, I, I think Bitcoin's got some short-term issues that's going to have to be worked out with... Um, you know, regulators and probably even legislators to what it actually is called, how it's treated, all these things. I think it'll be here long term because I see so many investment funds taking a position in the asset. But with that being said, you know, I still wish I had, you know, a thousand or more of them. So congratulations to whoever that is. That's a forward thinking cat right there. Look at right here. We see Mr. Whale, California financial regulators say they have no documents that show what is backing Tether, USDT or Circle USDC. So they're broadening the scope here. They want to know. Well, I can almost guarantee you that Jeremy Allaire is going to be able to show them what's up. Now, look at here. 
This is actually the correspondence here, the email response to the June 30th, 2021 request for records made pursuant of the California uh, Public Records Act. Government code gives all that. We notified you last week that we had an extended time in which to respond under the act. And then it says here, you seek financial statements, evidence, the financial backing of certain stable coins. DFP does not have records that are responsive to item one or two of your request. To the extent that DFPI may be in possession of any financial statements, evidence, and financial backing of any other stablecoin, including records that would be responsive to item three in your request, those records would be exempt for disclosure under the act itself. So it comes down here and they talk about the moving of the date of it to July 10th to July 23rd to provide us with any opportunity to search for, collect, and examine records that are responsive to your request. Expect We expect to be able to respond next week and that's where we're at with that this has been the long-standing question with stable coins and tether you know uh uh generally speaking you know is it backed properly you know there was a comment made down here by somebody here it said uh the american people don't have documents to show what's backing the usd either faith i guess and then mr whale rightfully answers back says that doesn't have any defense of tether it's a blatant fraud he says also, the U.S. dollar is backed by the largest military and economy in the world. I think that about says it. That's about says it. All right, now let's get into the melees of what's going on with the court trial and the deposition and William Hinman. Okay, so here's a great question by Stephanie Starr here, and it says, I have a question for our attorneys. Why has the judge not thrown the SEC in contempt of court over not releasing the documents as ordered the first time at the end of March. They had until April 12th and still nothing. What a great question. She goes on to say, I can't wrap my head around my agency that initiates a lawsuit and fights to not release documents pertinent to the case after a judge is ordered twice now. And is fighting to not have uh, a former official deposed, then tell the judge, well, well, just object to all the questions really. Who are the, these people? Who do they represent? Uh, you know, who do, who do they represent us? I don't recall voting for anyone in the SEC to represent me. James K. Filan answered back here below is Judge Netburn's order. She did order the documents produced, but subject to a claim of privilege which is the deliberative privilege, I believe he's speaking of here. The SEC is claiming a privilege and Ripple is challenging that claim. That's where we are now. Judge Netburn has to decide whether the SEC's privilege claim is valid. And then moving to this particular thing, this shows right here that the actual deposition that William Hinman has been ruled by the judge, he will sit for that, has been postponed to July 27th. The parties have made substantial progress in narrowing and resolving the privilege issues and will continue to confer. Parties will report to the court on their progress on Monday by 5 p.m., but the William Hemman deposition postponed to July 27, 2021, which ends up being the day before the SEC has to submit their wish list to Elizabeth Warren and Congress about whatever legislation is going on behind the scenes there. This all is starting to really shape shift. I can see it. And with this announcement that William Hinman is to sit for a deposition because of his comments specifically about Ethereum not being a security, a co-founder to Ethereum has appeared to haul ass Anthony D. Iorio Co-founder of Ethereum Network says he's done with cryptocurrency world and partially because of personal safety concerns, he says. Wow. I went into this article and basically he says he has, you know, a bodyguard, security team, all this stuff, and he doesn't want to share his net worth, which I totally understand. But uh, he basically goes down through here, talks about he's got a great apartment in Canada, one of the most expensive, and he thinks he can do better there, focusing on bigger issues and not cryptocurrency. It's funny because this article really doesn't cite any hard cold facts, right? It just it just it just says I'm going back there, and I'm basically getting out. You know, here's where he says uh, 
Uh, he said he talked with a couple potential investors and believes a startup will be in talking about a startup up here, but um, he expects to sell a company uh, for fiat and equity and other company, not crypto. I want to desert, diversify to not being a crypto guy, but being a guy tackling complex problems, he said. He is involved in Project Aero, run by a high school friend that's pr- building a zero emission vehicle. He also consulting a senator from Paraguay. I will incorporate crypto when needed, but a lot of times it's not. It's really a small percentage of the world's needs. <laughs> On the same day that William Hemmen is told he's going to sit for a deposition, this cat says, you know what, I'm quitting the crypto game. I'm quitting it because Ethereum is a security. It is an ICO. I'm not guessing at that. Vitalik Buterin, Buterin explains it many times in videos that all of us have shared. You know, uh, many other Joseph Lubin. I mean, there's been many others that have explained this. It is, you know, undeniable what it is and it gotta say it feels pretty undeniable that now that William Hemman has to sit and answer to these statements that he's made it's almost undeniable why this guy's jumped like a rabbit out of the bush here comes the government to regulate our stable coins what could possibly go wrong <laughs> gold telegraph says janet yellen will meet with regulators on monday to discuss stable coins and other things in the financial markets this is very significant considering market capitalization of all stable coins in existence is about $113 billion. He says, read my uh, thread pinned in the profile, would humbly say, I target uh, Binance still playing out. And I believe these things absolutely go hand in hand. This is the president's working group, Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen, to convene a meeting of president's working group on financial markets to discuss stable coins and it's right here and this is what we're talking about and i think this is a huge step that needs to happen because if we're going to talk about a united states digital dollar like the u.s digital dollar project that christopher john carlo the crypto dad is working on shout out to him and everybody over there then i think this is really really a great step forward to getting where we need to be. I do believe at some point we could see a public-private relationship with the Treasury and the Fed for a digital dollar. We will see how that continues. Here is what you've been waiting for right here. And let me close this. All right, let me get this close here. But uh, this is what you've been waiting for. And this is Ripple XRP price predictions. We have three different ones in this article. And shout out to DJ Peter Vass for the information and all the others that provided things this morning. Ripple XRP price predictions divergent even on good court case news. It says the case might end up being sealed in favor of Ripple through this big moment, but is that enough at this point to elevate XRP to previous highs? Ripple XRP price predictions don't seem to agree on an answer. Coindesk analysts, for example, are pointing to the current price trends as fodder for a bearish market in XRP. So what price predictions are outlets chalking up for XRP in the wake of this news? Let's take a look. Wallet Investor is predicting slight gains over the next 12 months for XRP. The outlet's July 2022 price pick for XRP is $1.03. And similarly, government capital prediction for XRP in July of next year is $1.05, right? Right? And then it comes down here and it says, on the most bearish side of predictions, the Economy Forecast Agency thinks that XRP will uh, be worth 47 cents in December. That represents a 22% loss on the current prices. And the most bullish side of things, Prime XBT thinks the lawsuit victory can send XRP values skyrocketing. They think a win against the SEC can proceed gains up to $16. Now that is one of those ones that comes very close to some of the technical analysts we've been uh, sharing on the channel here that have been calling for a $13 XRP. 
That is pretty amazing. Now, look, that I think to me that's about as fair a look as we could take at this thing. You got many different predictions from a dollar to forty-seven cents to sixteen dollars of all the things that we need to pay attention to. The trick is, I believe, is to continue to monitor all the fundamental news that comes out daily to understand exactly where XRP may or may not go. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. They are trusted, vetted links. And be very careful what you click on out here on the internet. I mean, they are products and services I use each and every day. And I know that they are trusted links. And I've had messages every week now where people are telling me they've clicked on something and they've had a phishing scam or something gone wrong and they've lost either some money or their identity information. Make sure you check that out. And Pure VPN too, another one of the many layers of how I hide my anonymity online. I'll catch all of you on the next one.